Hi there, my name is Diane, but you can just call me Dee. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to buy books or add books to your TBR that really can resonate with you and hopefully more often than not, there might be books that you enjoy a lot. I had this video idea because I used to buy uh, books because they were super hyped and I wanted to know what, what the, the hype was about really and because of that, most of the time the books I was reading were in a genre that I did not like or I was just not interested in or they were written by authors that their writing style just wasn't matching what I would enjoy reading and so it never really ended up being amazing and so I've learned uh, that you know, even though a book is really hyped, it doesn't have to mean that I'm gonna like it and it's okay that I don't like it. And I know that sometimes some books you think, but is it if it's so hyped, like it has to be because it's good, right? Wrong. <laughs> and, and I think here for, for most people, it's probably right. It's just that for me, because I have such different taste than what the hyped books are on booktube usually um, and also I, my opinions uh, are usually on the minority side of what the opinion the general opinion about a book is on booktube and so therefore if I buy books that are really hyped it's more likely gonna be a book that I'm not gonna enjoy in the end. A few things that you, you need to know to start with. I am a huge cover buyer. I'm definitely gonna go for the beautiful cover, like it's a problem. <laughs> but because I am such a cover buyer, I tend to sometimes not look at books that have covers that don't call for my attention straight away and that's something that I'm you know, I try to keep in mind and it's gonna come back for a few tips that I have to try to counter interact um, this. I'm also really picky with the writing style and this doesn't have to be because I think I know what good writing is. No, I think it's just that if you give us different writing styles, some people might enjoy certain things about the writing, some people enjoy flowery writing, some people enjoy very straightforward writing styles, some people enjoy more when it's written in first person or in third person, uh, in present, in the future, uh, in the future, not in the past. So all combined, I've made myself aware of what I enjoy uh, in terms of writing styles and it's usually not something that is too flowery. I like something that is more straightforward, but it can have some of that beautiful writing, but it has to be, it has to be meaningful. It cannot be nonsensical. Um, and then I enjoy often reading in the third person in the past tense, um, but I'd be fine reading in the first person and in the present, it's just that it would not be my favorite. And then I also like something that can be dark, that's fine with me, but in the end I always like a message that is uplifting and hopeful. I don't enjoy dark and traumatizing stories for nothing, um, so that's a bit difficult <laughs> because one of my favorite genres is kind of horror and thrillers. Also another thing to note about me is that I am a mood reader, so because of that, I've learned that I really want to get books that are different genres, different age range, different tones, different lengths, just so I can give myself a lot of variety because I'm a mood reader, so, so I never know what I'm gonna wanna read. And the last thing is that I like to read synopses and then forget about them. My first tip is check out lists and new releases. Uh, so there's a ton of lists on Goodreads every week uh, and every month they publish um, lists about books that are either new releases, upcoming releases or, you know, uh, backlist books and those are really helpful. Similar to going on to Reddit and, you know, asking what kind of book would give me this atmosphere. That's what I, I would recommend, is just to go into 
to go and find lists that group different books together, lists that are interesting to you, lists of maybe like upcoming thrillers, for example, for me, or uh, high fantasies that you need to read, things like that. So that gives you a good idea of the genre and, and the overall feel and hopefully they don't miss the mark on that. <laughs> and then the second tip is to not buy your least read genres. So for example, for me, my least read genres would be purely con contemporary, general fiction, um, romance, maybe some historical. It's less likely for me to buy a book and love it um, in that type of genre. So it's it's better to get it from the library or some other means if I'm able to get it because I don't want to spend 30 to 40 dollars it's expensive in Canada for something that you know I don't even know exactly what I enjoy in that genre because it's usually not something I read so it's better for me to grab it as an ebook or something like that that is less expensive and then the third tip is to check your favorite authors new releases and backlists because you really enjoy something about those authors, you may be more likely to find other books from them that you also really enjoy. That'll depend on what you have enjoyed about this author's previous books that you've read. So for example, Courtney Summers and Aiden Thomas are authors that I really resonate and enjoy their writing style. And so even though some of the books that they are writing is not as interesting to me. Just uh, knowing that they are the writers, I trust their writing to be what I enjoy and therefore I'm more likely to enjoy their books, if that makes sense. That's something for the writing style. Maybe if you like twists in thrillers, if there's someone like Riley Seeger has very interesting twists, sometimes ridiculous twists, if that's something that you enjoy, maybe uh, look into their other books maybe they have also that type of twist in other books and then my next tip would be look into buying a book in advance so if you like to read books based on the season you know like the type of feel and mood that a book has just look into a lot of the books that are coming up or that are usually recommended for that type of season or books that you feel like they might put you in that mood for the season look at those before the actual season like maybe one season to two seasons before just because there's a lot okay there's a lot a lot of books so the earlier you look into it and you know you select which ones you'd be potentially reading for that season, the less likely you'll remember the synopsis. And so when you go into that new season, you'd be able to pick up those books and, you know, just know that you think that you're gonna enjoy them um, and get right into it. My next tip would be if, so if there are genres and tropes that you usually dislike and potentially hate, make sure you know that before you go into a book. This one can be a bit tricky, especially for anything that is thriller, mystery, horror-like. Those are quite difficult to know if, you, if there's gonna be a trope that you don't like. For example, I dislike with a passion books that are supposed to be thrillery but that have a supernatural ending without telling you about it like i need to know get going into the book that it's going to be supernatural and so um, it's oftentimes something that can put a three to four stars to a one star because i just dislike this thing where nothing is set up to be supernatural and then at the end it's supernatural so because i know going into that i usually try to look at reviews just to make sure and because i know that something i dislike that usually will affect my enjoyment of the book if you go on goodreads for example there's different tags in terms of the genres that people people have tagged the book in and so i would see if there's supernatural um, and if there is, I might look into some reviews that are non-spoilery just to make sure. If it's part of a twist, it's unfortunate. I think that's one way of doing it. So another trope that I really dislike is a, um, a love triangle. I just, I think it's boring and it's so overdone. So I really try to stay away from that type of books. And unfortunately, it's a lot of YA fantasies. 
And I do really enjoy YA fantasy books, but because they have that uh, love triangle, I, um, I just don't... I just don't want to fuck with that. <laughs> For those, actually, there is, I think, a website that lists if a book has love triangles. So I'll try to link it down below. It was super useful for me for some books. So the next step is when you've gathered all those books, read the synopsis. Trust me, just do it. I know some people just like to get into books. It's fine, I'm just gonna get into books. I don't want to know anything. I'm like that, I'm exactly like that. Is this just ridiculous to spend 30 plus dollars on a book that you know nothing about just because the cover is beautiful. That's nonsense. <laughs> just read the synopsis, you will forget about it if you read it long ago enough. I think it would be to your disadvantage actually if you were to not read the full synopsis. But even if you don't read it, read a good portion to feel like is this a book I'm going to enjoy in terms of the storyline? Do I enjoy where this is going? However, the way I uh, counter that is by reading the synopsis well in advance, like months in advance. And if that's a book I like, then I will put it in my wish list. And later on, when I go uh, to buy a book, I will look into it. I probably most likely will not remember the synopsis. But what I'll do is I'll look at the blurb. You know, usually it's a very small like one sentence that catches your attention um, and that's where I can be like oh okay it's that type it doesn't give me the full story of what's going on but I feel like that's something I'm gonna enjoy so maybe try this but I would really encourage you to read the synopsis before buying a $40 book like this is just ridiculous. The next tip would be to read a sample. There's actually quite a lot of samples available to you, uh, usually on Amazon or even on Goodreads. Does Goodreads do it still? I don't remember. But there's definitely um, samples of like the first couple of chapters uh, on Amazon and also on your library Libby app. Uh, so if you have the Libby app, you can read a sample, even if a book is on hold, which is great. So I think that's also a great way for you to understand. If you're like me, kind of picky about the writing that you enjoy reading, um, just reading, having a, a sample to just a few pages, just to see what the writing style is and see if that's something you'd be um, enjoying and something that you can mesh with it's super helpful. So I would recommend reading a sample if you are uh, able to get one. And the last one, which comes back to what I've said in the beginning, is to have a variety of books available to you to read. Once you've done all those tips, that's how you're gonna get a TBR. So when you select all the books, just make sure that you select different types of books that you enjoy, different genres and, and everything else. If you're not a mood reader like me, then it doesn't really matter, but if you're a mood reader, it's super important to have differences. I have sci-fi, I have fantasy, I have mystery, thrillers, horrors, I have everything that I usually tend to enjoy and, or be interested in. Uh, and that way, when I'm done with the book, I go and look at my shelves, I go and look at my TBR shelf, and I'm like, what am I in the mood for, you know? Am I in the mood for this one, this one, or probably not this one? Most of the time, I'm in the mood for at least one book that's in there. And if I'm not, well, I need to come to those shelves because those are the ones that I need to read books from. So for sure, try to have at least a couple, if possible, on your TBR that are different genres, unless there's only one genre that you like, then, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> and that's how I pick my books that I add on my TBR. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, let me know how you select your own books. Do you usually just, you know, look at a book you're interested in and buy it straight away and then read it? Or do you look at a few books at a time and then buy a few, then read it that later on? But let me know down below what are your habits in terms of building your own TBR. I'd be super interested in knowing that. But if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.